as befits the name of this event, it is truly an international event. We've got 128 players here representing 22 different countries from around the world. It's an extremely tough event to win, and whoever wins is going to certainly be deserving of the title. So let's get right underway with our first knockout round of the evening. We're in our single elimination uh, aspect at this time. It's win or go home. Introducing first, ladies and gentlemen, playing in his first international nine ball event from Spain. He's a former under 19 world nine ball champion. He's sponsored by Predator and by DF Billiards. If you're from Spain, you can only have one nickname. They call him the Macarena. Please welcome Jonas Soto. Thank you, his opponent representing the USA. We could list all this man's accomplishments and be here for about two weeks. I think we can sum it up really quickly and say that he has been voted the 2010 to 2019 Billiards Digest Player of the Decade. And that certainly sums up his accomplishments. Sponsored by QTech and by Andy Cloth, it's the South Dakota kid, Shane Van Boning. Okay, gentlemen, if you would, lad, for the break. Your official timekeeper is John Baker. We're going to send it upstairs to the booth to Mark Wilson and USA Moscone Cup Captain Double J, Jeremy Jones. Take. Great to be here and welcome back, pool fans. It's Jeremy Jones here with me, Mark Wilson. Jeremy, let's hear your thoughts on this one. Well, a young Spaniard that uh, I would label kind of like the two in front of him from Spain, that being Ruiz and now Katie. I haven't got to watch him play a ton, but he seems kind of like the same spirited player, uh, very much a fighter. Um, I think he's still young in many ways. Um, when I watch him play also, kind of like understanding some mistakes, I can tell he's, he's kind of learning as he goes as well. But like I said, a guy that's going to fight to win, he, he knows he's learning, but he's also trying to win the tournament. And then I guess Shane speaks for himself, as Kenny alluded to. A super pleasant kid. I spoke to him before the match, and uh, he's definitely geared up for this one. He's been playing hard all week. I've watched him on the outer tables. I've watched him practice every evening, and he's very sincere. And uh, this will this could be a test. Gene Van Boning. Yeah, I mean, this kid made it to the final 32 here, and the, almost all the players that are eliminated are great players themselves. So yeah, yeah, you can't get here accidentally, right? You have to win some quality matches. And uh, I think he lost fairly early as well, second round, I think. So he's had to put, put together a few wins, uh, you know, to get here. Now, the one thing is he's not uh, unfamiliar with playing great players. Mm -hmm. you know, he's played on the Euro Tour now for a few years and been here the last couple months playing all the big events. start there he wanted I don't know if he's really given much up as far as the rail first that's real close Shane not taking much time though Mark so he must be able to get a piece of it watch out eight ball and no coincidence that you know he reminds me of Ruiz or how Katie probably models his game after those two guys. He, uh, I could definitely tell in speaking to him that uh, they're a couple of us as heroes. He was uh, proud of Ruiz as a role model, as a human being, not just a pool player. So. Yeah, he's a pleasant man. Little off angle here, so he's got to stun the ball a little bit. Get around the eight. May sacrifice with a little bit of distance on the six. What do you think, Mark? You just yeah. Hair. Uh, when you play as much as Shane does, he can manufacture this stroke and get to make it look like it was natural. Okay, he didn't have to stun, so that tells you how comfortable he is. Some guys would fear, you know, deflecting a little thick into the five and maybe not getting that much movement on the cue ball. So they'd kind of force the movement a little bit, but I think you and I have said it before, nobody 
spent more time on the TV table the last 15 years than Shane. Yeah, he was totally comfortable to play part of the pocket and let the cue ball just come around there on its own. And I'll tell you another thing that reason why I think Shane has improved even more. Um, I think he's conscious to be a little more fluid, you know. He'll tell you himself that sometimes he gets a little quick, you know, so. Mm -hmm. And maybe plays a little more stun shots than spin shots. And uh, one thing is he wants to play the right shot. That's for sure. Shane takes advantage of a good opportunity there. Wins his first game. Yeah, a little shake of the head from Shane. And so something he wasn't totally in love with. <laughs> he looks over at Devin Poteet. He's kind of in Shane's corner here. I, I like it that Shane is a little more human. He's a little more relaxed. He's comfortable with who he is nowadays. He's not trying to prove anything to anybody. He's just playing the, to be the best in the sport. Yeah, I think it was you and I that discussed it the other day that what I see is just a guy that's real happy to be here and really like uh, just kind of wanting to play more than anything else. Kind of in a kiddish manner, it, you know, you might say, but a good way. Um, you know, I see it when a mistake or, you know, or a bad roll maybe happens. It's, like, it's more of a darn it than, a, mm -hmm. than, a, than another word, you know, mm -hmm. maybe. Uh, so... I think that you know, speaks volumes and also really may set it up to be even more tough to beat this guy. Cue ball got away from him just a little bit. Well, you'll see him play below the rack much more than others uh, with this break. He smashes it a little harder, first off. Yeah. So that doesn't give the draw, you know, enough time to take. Yeah. Um, it sounds like gambling coming below the rack, but he's won a bunch of tournaments with it, so... Man, what a sweet shot we're about to get to see here, most mm. likely. He hit the best draw stroke I ever saw on the 5x10, I think, yesterday, yeah, under pressure. Yeah, that ball was deep, the three ball. Mm. Never touched the side rail. Drew it on a line between a few balls. The ball went about 10 feet down and 10 feet back. That was so pretty. Now, you won't even overhit this because the three's kind of cuttable. Right. You know, so. If you come back at all, you're good. He just doesn't want to drift to his right. Yeah, and he doesn't want to put a cinch stroke on it. I mean, you know, he wants to put a pretty decent stroke. This is just uh, two-thirds of a pocket maximum, and he's elapsed his shot clock, which he seldom ever does. He did in this case, 40 seconds. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know. What a pretty shot. Yeah, one, one thing I always talk about, Shane, and I think that's a perfect example is, of course, the stroke was nice, but he rarely mishits the cue ball. Not saying his tip hits exactly where he starts, but I'm talking about where he intends. Uh, and that's one of the things, I, in my opinion, that gives you a great room for error in this game is if your tip stays nice, you know, your timing yeah. can be at all, a bit off at times. Now, the good thing that I like about alternate break, um, well, boats for a lot, a lot of closer matches first off, but, you know, the young Spaniard, Soto Suto, I'm not sure exactly. Soto. Right. Soto, I yeah. thought so, yeah. But um, he can make up for that mistake that he had there in game number one. And I think that's a plenty fair way to play it. Nice breaking run out there to capture game two. And Shane Van Boning taking nothing for granted. A little bit of an unforced error there by Soto, and it costs him two games before he gets back to the table, and that's what happens at elite class pool. 
the big draw shot there set up the whole rack off of a great break. And we'll try and give you some outer scores. What a beautiful setup here. Mark and I, of course, with a great view of the arena and everything going on, but let alone a mark with his binoculars. But <laughs> I can see the scores for most part and the names. And uh, what I'm getting at is what Pat's done with the setup here, not only for the viewers here, but the viewers at home being able to tune into any match they want to and flip it around a little bit. Kind of like a Sunday football, right? Right. Oh, it's great. There's always feature match. And once we get to this stage, every match is a feature match. So to the second break. And to make the one on the side. I guess so. Yeah, a little more cut, so I don't know oh. if he's going to comply. Yeah, only one ball across the line. And you can see more movement on the cue ball. So he just got the one a little thinner that time, Mark. And didn't quite get enough, you know, power into the rack, however you want to label it. I think there is a hair of a piece of the two here. With a non-compliant break, here's the rules. Three balls have to cross the head string. If you make two balls on the break, the, those rules are voided. If you make one ball on the break, then two balls have to cross the head string. That did not happen. So Shane can accept this shot or pass it back. There is no push-out option. Okay, he's sizing that up. And there's a lot going on with this. This is one of those scenarios you and I started to talk about the other day. You know, this is on Soto's break, right? Mm -hmm. A little better than favorite to make it, I think. You know, this mm -hmm. may be one of those places where Shane says, let me take on this shot. Got a chance to get safe if I do miss it. Right? Yeah. And I break next with a 2 nothing lead. So I think a little score involved here on taking this shot. There's a lot. I mean, you could fluke the ball in. You may not leave a reasonable shot. I think there was a you know, decent chance there now. Maybe the simple safety behind the 479. I like that. Just moving it simply. Keep, yeah. You know. And I think rather than try to get the two ball to the end rail, I think bank it across the table. Yeah. It just speeds a little bit. Yeah, and he's left him a lot with the jump cue. There was quite a bit of leeway with that one to get that buried in there a little better. And it, well, I think he wanted to secure the hook where I think really what the thing to do was cut it down the rail and come behind those balls kind of tightly, right? Just kind of rely on your speed. I think you leave a really bad kick shot also if you cut it kind of down the rail and come back behind those balls. Ooh, that hit the pocket and jumped out. I don't know if... We'll be able to see that one again, but that one actually, I think, hit the back of the diamond pocket, came back out. I was watching here on the monitor, and it wasn't clear, but it looked like it was pretty accurate. And now that I look down at the table. Watch out, six ball. Okay. For as good of a view as Jeremy and I have, sometimes the jib camera gets in the way, so I like to look at the monitor periodically when that's happening because each of us have a slightly different perspective. All right, Mark, does he stun it or does he pinch it? Looks like he's stunning it. I think he stops it. Uh, he's got a little angle, doesn't he? I thought he could yeah. hold it, yeah. He's got a little of the Spanish fire, too, and this is a swagger. Yeah, absolutely. He came in steep, so speed was kind of crucial. Didn't really broaden the angle much like, you know, most players would, right? But I kind of understand, uh, you know, he'd rather just play a straight top English right there, you know, because his nerves are probably a little high. And that side pocket's over there, too. He'd Certainly doesn't want to risk going into that. Right, is this going to get off angle? It looks ish. Yeah. Now speed controls really important. I think we're going to see a two cushion shot going forward. I agree, but it is awfully tight, right? So. Oh yeah. No, it takes a big stroke because you're hitting the six ball so flush. It's yeah. Jump. It's all spin. Yeah. Well, this guy, from what I've seen, has plenty of stroke. Just a matter of if he can stay accurate. The speed's good. Very straight cueing. 
Yeah, he kind of stunned it. So he was a little afraid of going tight towards that corner, you know. A lot of the guys will just accept the angle and not really try to help the angle there. That way they get a little more cue ball movement, right? Mm-hmm. Now he's got to contact the nine, it looks like. And that makes it harder because your mind is split, and you got to get real single-minded. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying that's what caused the miss, but it didn't help things. No. And the nine there. Then the seven checks up near the side pocket. So. Well, the problem with the shot on the six mentally is if he didn't intend to stun it. You know, he didn't He didn't right. like, you know what I mean? Right. Some guys will do that a lot of times. I'll do that in high nerves, you know, kind of yeah. overhit the ball, and it'll become a stun shot instead of a spin shot. And, <laughs> then uh, that doesn't do anything for your confidence. Exactly, for sure. <laughs> exactly right. So it's hard to tell exactly what went on there, but. Yep. He's just not going to get uh, many favors from this guy. Looks like it's going to be three to zero early for SVB. Alex Kazakis and John Moore at one to one. James Aranis looks like he's about to go up three to one on D Atkins. What a nice tournament D's having. Who is that over there playing Oliver Zanoki? Can't quite tell. You want me to get out the binoculars? Well, usually pretty good at it, but it looks like a Kuwaiti flag maybe is over that. Oh, so. good Lord. You really have vision. Yeah. Fetter, <laughs> I have zero chance to see that. Fetter Gorst uh, from the 5 o'clock round, him and Shane Wolford in a battle at 8-7. to seven. Fetter Gorst, what a tournament Shane's having. Just beating a lot of really good players. Well, great players, former world champions. Zelensky. Looks like he's playing... Is that Yusuf he's playing over there that's jacked up in the air on the far table? I think it is. Back to the main table with SVB to break up 3-0. to zero. I know. I love watching the SVB lead off and break. Yeah, watch the cut break and how much more power he usually puts compared to, you know, he really connects on it. But, of course, he just like his regular breaks, he gets more out of it. So it appears like he gets a lot more into it as well. I think he's got a dead one here. He's looking at it. If he does, boy, that'd be a windfall because he's jacked up over the eight. Yeah, and I, th I think, I think the four. I think he can make it actually if he's okay. if he's willing to hit it slowly. I don't think he can get to the right side of the two. What I'm talking about, even though they're not stuck together, they will throw a little bit if you lay on top of that two ball. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. It's, but it's borderline. This is because there's a gap there. Well, so the other one that's much. not the other one that's not helping is the uh, slick felt. The slick felt doesn't help it throw as much. Believe it or not, there's not as much friction there. So I don't yeah. know what he could be rolling out to. Though. Yeah, you oh, can that's see, a lot of space. Yeah. yeah, too much to get throw probably. So especially with polished balls, I, that more than anything, I think. Now what Shane is. Hoping to get back here is one of two shots, a subtle bank on the two, past the four, and just kind of rubbing the three and falling up on the end rail, or moving the cue ball behind the five, a bunch of rails. I think this might be makeable, I swear. I think it was makeable myself. Nice effort here. I would have liked to have seen what Shane could see of the two ball after the break. Because it wasn't aimed that well, right? And no, he still threw it downward pretty yeah, decent. You he know, did get so, some. And he right. put some speed on it, right? Yeah. So I kind of really feel it was a, a makeable ball. But now if Shane can see a piece of this, he'll try and get him behind the seven. I think, or try to make the bank and get him behind the seven. I think he might be taking on the bank. Well, yeah. I don't think he'll just totally open the cue ball up. Though. No, seven ball is a big part of it. Oh, he hit a little heavy, so he's going to need help from the from the four. He's not going to get it. Kind of combination. He doesn't want to undercut, really, the only way to miss it. So 
if he catches the 8 thin, the 2 may come across a little bit, depending on what speed he wants to hit. Oh, nice shot. Very good shot. Now he has an optimum layout of balls here. And just mainly the work at the end, end of the rack from the 7 to the 9. Hit that ball pretty heavy. That's why he got the hook on the cue ball instead of it just kind of releasing down the table. Almost like a hydraulic a little bit. Tell you what, he's made this a little funny. He's got to have, if he can't get at the three, he's got to have good speed playing this reel first and it's sitting up on the point of hair. Right. He's, it's going to take a good hit. You can yeah. easily hang this ball or miss it or wobble I agree. It. Now, he could guarantee make it if he wanted to lay on it, kind of double kiss, but that's not doing much for the cue ball. That's going to leave a tough shot on the four. Okay, and this is the other thing. When he had to get thin, cue ball was going to run. He did a good job with that one. Now, probably still has to maybe shoot from a, maybe the, the head string area with, with the cue ball here. Kind of stun two rails and let it kill up off the short rail, the top rail. Oh, he can follow and beat the scratch. Excuse me. Oh, the camera really fool you. Well, he's worked himself back into pretty good line. Would you come across for the side here? On, he's looking at the left side pocket. That's kind of a funny way to play shape here to me. It looks like you could get really off with the speed, right? Yep. And I'm happy he's got the corner to play with. Right. He needs to go to the corner now for sure. But that was an interesting way to play shape, you know. A lot of guys that would play that, they would pull the ball, but the nine's in the way to do that, right? You would pull it two rails over into this corner to be very kind of heavy on it. Yeah. Nine's in the way, as you said. Yeah. Okay, good recovery there. Very good. And rather than go for the side, I think most of us would have come around two cushions and give ourselves a big margin of error on that corner pocket where you can either draw or follow to get on the seven. Because if you get funny on that side Ooh, pocket. Oh, see? But that leads, those things lead to funny, more funny things, right? Yeah. And it's like Billy and I talked about in the last match with side pockets. A lot of times you tr try to run the cue ball or get shape for the side, and you end up shooting in the corner anyways. <laughs> that kind of proves to you, you yeah. know, that how, how kind of off sides can be. All right, he probably let him cue it a little better than he should have, but... But from where he was yeah, at... Yeah, containing the nine is the most more important thing, right? This is... I, I don't think this has the value, though, that banking it would have... Because uh, Shane's going to shoot at this for sure. Yeah, that's why I say he gave him too much cue ball. Right, you know, and, so. and he's not going to make every one of these. But you had a pretty you had about this bank for yourself. It wouldn't have been a whole lot worse. And yeah. there's still the backdoor safety aspect of it. I, mm -hmm. I think he should have not played safe there. Well, the only thing was that he was stretched. Right, he was very oddly cueing. Uh, it's going to catch a little point. We'll see about the speed. Kind of like the backdoor safety. There it is. Mm, got funny. Yeah. Well, maybe it's, not. I think it's cuttable. It's oh. not easy. No, it's not easy. The, overhead, that's, that's the thing the is, uh, you got to shoot it a little bit. <laughs> you get a clean, clean hit here. If you roll this, it's probably going to drag into the rail with the cue ball. Yeah, like Good, that. Chat. Good chat. Good chat. Yeah. <laughs> he staggers away from the table like, good Lord, it's hard to win a game here. Three yeah. to one is our score. A little early to be feeling like, uh, looked like he had a few body blows there from Shane. And Soto was walking away there, right? Well, there was a couple, you know, errant position plays. I think that's mainly it. It's not what, he knows Shane's going to play good. He's not worried about that at all. But he's a little disappointed himself. They call him the Macarena. Versus the South Dakota kid.
better course at the table. Now he's overhit that ball by some piece. He's going to get away with it, I think. He's not happy, but he's up 9-7 to seven over Shane Wolford shooting at the 7 ball. Okay, here we go. Jonas breaking. Yeah, a lot heavier hit that time. A lot more action on the balls. A little upset about the 2-8 cluster, but can't, can't really even shoot at the 1 because of it. I don't think anyways. I don't know if he can hold his ball from that angle. Long ways away, and it's a lot of angle on the one to try and hold your ball to maybe bank the two or play safe. So it would be interesting to shoot at. If he hangs it, it could be really bad. Yeah, I like this idea. Just play safe now while you got a little bit more comfortable place to play safe from. He's going to jump at it probably. And the other part of it is you leave that thing tangled up there, and then if you do sell out a shot, and Shane makes this one. He's still got something to do to get the two. Better course went on to get out, so he'll make it to the final 16. Heck of a tournament for Shane Wolford. Four rail shape, short side. <laughs> I'm just trying to make the ball. One, two. Well, I thought he'd put a little left English on that, maybe to try and get the cue ball moving. This is where Shane doesn't get enough credit in my mind. Like from these goofy, non-obvious situations on yeah. being able to play safe or somewhat of a safety, he usually figures out something pretty tricky, pretty handy. Like he may try and bank this backwards two rails, right, to the end rail and draw the cue ball lightly one rail towards the seven, trying to use the five as a blocker. Mm-hmm. You know, I think, you know, if he tries to get the two all the way to the end rail, I think he may give up the cue ball a little. But if he lets it just roam across the middle of the table, I think the speed will be there. Just like that. Just, uh, yeah, just try, try and do whatever you can, right? What a hit. Yeah. Man. That's world-class pool right there. To yeah. Two rail that ball and then control the cue ball well enough. That well. You have end rail to end rail. I played some three cushion with Shane. You know, he's got he's not bad at all. He's actually pretty darn good. Yeah. So he kinda a lot of people think it's the break that won him all those tournaments. Of course it was it was a monster, but and it still is, but he knows what he's doing otherwise. Oh, he's a complete player and he works at it every day to be a more complete player. Yeah, and that's building those instincts. That shot there isn't just totally mapped out. You have to feel the drop of the ball, killing it with the left English. How much is it going to throw the two ball? A lot going on with that little shot. What's your three cushion high run? 13. Holy shit. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's good. Yeah. I, you know who helped me play pool? Well, we, uh, Jersey Red, and he was a pretty darn good three cushion player. So for, we had a table there in the pool room, and for about a month, we kind of fooled around with that along with some one pocket. So. He kind of gave me a real good foundation on how to yeah. try and learn the game. And I don't get to play it very often, but I'm decent. I, I still admire I mean, that's, you know. Jersey Red because of his complete set of skills. Banking, nine ball, straight pool, one pocket, billiards. What, what is it you want to do? <laughs> yeah. yeah. He was great at all of it. A lot of the greats told me as far as playing all the games in his era, he was the best on the 5x10. So there were some better on the 45 half by 9 What a shot. Boy, Watch out shot, now. Shane. He needs that to slow down. He's got a thin cut on the four, but. Yeah, I kind of start off usually a little rough in the three cushion, and then after I play for a few days, it gets a little better. There's so many great tables around now these days. Not where I live so much, but, you know, some pool rooms. We go to tournaments and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's really a lot of fun to play. All right. Do you play just one rail speed here? Do you go up and down? It's right on the borderline for me on which one's more comfortable. Yeah. This, I think it's up and down here, but no, he's uh -huh. able to control the speed. Yeah. 
He didn't want to flirt with the eight. If the eight wasn't there, I think he easily goes up and down, right? Look at how dangerous the speed was. He couldn't hardly hit that any softer, and he's within 10 inches of the object ball. So well, I'll one thing, you. yeah, one thing he did there is he took away the side spin from that distance. So he couldn't really kill, he didn't want to kill it with a heavier hit either from seven or eight feet away. Really just a fantastic shot. You know, and one thing we don't talk about enough why these guys do all these great things is, you know, what's going on internally, right? Yeah. I mean, Shane, I don't know if you'd label it nerves with Shane. Of course, I think we all get nervous. Um, but I think uh, the one thing that all of us also feel that I think he does feel is pressure, you know, which I don't know if that's a, a, the same thing as nerves. I don't know. Um but the moment, you know, I think mm -hmm. Shane does feel the moment and, you know, maybe executes better than anybody ever has in the moment. But anybody that tells you they don't get nervous does not care enough. And right, it's not, right. It's not that he's afraid to compete. It's not that he's afraid to lose. But he also doesn't know the distribution of the balls. He knows that sometimes it can kind of uh, heist opportunities from you. And so he just wants to put on a quality performance and then, you know, the... Whatever happens, happens. He's certainly not impervious to absorbing losses, but because he's not afraid to lose, he wins more than what you might think he should. Yeah, and that's, you know, kind of a very accurate statement, the last part, just because there's only been a few that have <laughs> won at that mm -hmm. kind of rate, you know, so... Yeah, I don't even need to know whose opponent is. I'll just bet on him every match. Yeah, exactly. Blindly, right. you know? yeah, it's kind of like we were talking about the other day about him taking on tough shots versus safety. And, then, you know, it's kind of like, yeah, you know, hindsight sometimes is going to say, man, he probably should have played safe there. But you'd be way winner betting on him making those tough <laughs> yeah. shots, you know. So Exactly. And uh, Just like here, the 3-4 combo, he's not passing on this ever, I don't think. And second-guessing his shot decision-making is... You know, that's a fatal idea, too. Yeah. Whatever he chooses, I'm good with. Now, the interesting thing about this shot, if he could just kind of light draw, you know, not a real, like, not saying he's got a heavy draw, but he's got to pinch it pretty good to hold shape. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what makes this combo tough. If he could shoot this combo just kind of any way he wanted just to make it, pretty easy combo for these guys. See how he had to kind of lighten it, pinch it, just hit center cut. But he also got through the cue ball really nice. I mean, he stayed still as a statue, and you watch that tip. It just went right straight through the cue ball. He didn't poke or jab. As, as sometimes I've seen him do it, but he did not do it here on that shot, and it wouldn't have worked had he. Well, it's, like I said, amazing. His fundamental and his technique, it's like when he needs it, he goes through the ball. <laughs> it's a funny thing, you know. It's, yeah. it, he can hit at the ball and get so many things done that no one else can uh, that I've ever seen anyways. I don't recall a, a player of even close to, you know, you know, like Josh Filler, right? He strikes the ball, of course, mm -hmm. but he also goes through the ball. You know, he doesn't go miles, but he goes through the ball. Um, but Shane at times, you know, prefers to not to, not to go through the yeah, ball. Yeah, he's a little pokey or jabby at shots. Well, I hate to even call it those names because it's effective, <laughs> and he does it yeah. so well. No, it's, it's, a, it's a funny. It completely works if you pour in ten hours a day. Yeah, you yeah. can totally make it work. Right, anything works. It doesn't have to be orthodox. You just have to repeat. Does he have to draw one rail over here short side? I don't know if the six passes. This is a real awkward arrangement of the balls to get positioned on here for the six. Yeah, just like that. He's got control of the How mark. Good that he hit that. I mean, come on, that deserves a round of applause, that shot. That was a heck of a position play. He had to warp the angle to get to the side rail, then use the right speed. Yeah, kind of go against it a little bit to kill it, coming off that rail, and yeah. then the second one ate up the rest of it. 
wonder if he rolls this. I like kind of stunning to open up the ball, uh, open up the cue ball a little bit for the seven in the side, I think. He normally does, too. He likes to put a little more pace on this one. Yeah, nice shot. We were playing all ball fouls, which is the only way to play, in my opinion, at this level. Didn't go to a rail. Oh, he did. Okay. More angle there, maybe. All right. When Shane's really thinking well, keeping it simple, just draws this back. Or you can even just stop. I, mean, if I think he's got a little angle here. So I don't know if he really wants to lightly stun and play the nine on the side. I think he may. Oh, he did. Nice stroke. Big stroke, slow cue ball. You got to right. know you're playing well, right? Well, and, and th I think this was easier than drawing back in this case. But from that little, it was yeah. just a hint off angle. Well, and that's, that goes back to that preference thing, right? He does like the stun a lot. All right, here's what's up. We got a player timeout, and then we have an issue down on the far table. So they've come and got Kenny Schumann. All right, here we are, game number seven. Soto, he really hasn't, I mean, he's made a couple mistakes, that's for sure, but really he's looked comfortable overall, and, you know, he's done a lot of good things. He's made one on the break. He needs some help here. I don't think the three's going to get there. Uh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. yeah, now the two ball, it, it's open. I'm not sure if it's makeable. The five is very close to cutting that off, but. Kind of hard to think he would pass up on this, right? He's going to bank it away and play safe, if anything. Yeah. Shane will definitely take the shot on. It's just a determining how he wants to play it. Yeah. And he won't risk fouling, trying to pocket the two with the looks of the three ball, right? right. I mean, there's just, right. yeah, I think he banks this away, draws one rail up on the five, or tries to anyways. Got to cut it a little bit so it's touchy. Okay, so just let me add. What Jeremy's saying is just a little bit of low left and go to the rail to get to the five, not straight to the five, because that would run into a double kiss. Yeah, it, I'll tell you what you're doing here. You're putting the two towards the three, towards the nine. So, And he's got to cut it to really avoid that kiss a little bit. So this is a very touchy shot. It sure is. Now, if he wanted to cut it more and bank it by the three and lay the cue ball on the end rail, I wouldn't mind that either. Oh, how'd he hit it? Oh, how'd he hit shot. it? And gorgeous the, shot. Gorgeous yeah, shot. Everybody in the world, <laughs> just look at how calm he hit it as well. Yeah. That's why it worked out. It was just a nice, even pace stroke. Everything grabbed like it was supposed to. Everything stayed on line. What he just did there is much harder than a super long straight in. Absolutely. <laughs> That is a really good hit. And then speed, you got to be playing a lot of pool to be able to execute like that. Well, the two rail is tough and the one rail is tough here. Yeah, I like the two, I think. I, Straight top, maybe, Mark? I don't know. I, I thought the one rail, just because it's such a weird angle. They, but yeah, he's but, queuing high, which indicates yeah, two think, rails. But I, I think on the, the slick angles, table, two rails a little easier. All right. He got a piece. He He's did. going towards the side. Wow, great effort. And he got the two on the other side of that pocket. So Shane can see the two ball. He's the favorite to kick it in, though. I do agree, but the three's really ugly. No good. Right. He may try to play the two off the point and try and travel the cue ball somewhere. I bet if he could get to the rail before the two, he would shoot some type of shot like that, playing the two off the point, maybe, and the cue ball behind the 3-4, 3-6. Th He's kicking at it. This is brutal here. you got to well, hit his light. He's kicking at it to get to a better place to play safe from. Is the only reason. Yeah, but ball in hand, he doesn't want to give up. That's for sure. I don't think the three has an open pocket. You're going to come three rails trying to contact this ball. He was looking from behind. Looks like the three would go in the same side pocket that he has. Sure. I don't know. Maybe not. The original overhead told me I thought maybe not, but I 
that's a good one there. You can kind of see some space there. I think he may draw right into these balls, is what I think. He tried to. And now he's pinned himself on the back rail. He had ball in hand, so he really should have had the cue ball another three inches closer to the object ball if he wanted to play that shot. He's going behind the five. So watch out. Can't afford the eight, not to hit the eight. That's going to turn over and leave a shot for SBB. So like a few mistakes for Soto, but then again, you know, like right there, you take a little chance drawing the ball. I mean, I think he's supposed to get into those balls. Don't get me wrong. But it hasn't been always just an, something easy for the young man. Mm, pretty shot. Oof. He was trying to catch a piece of the four. He did. Not quite enough, but... Hit the three awful sweet, though. He did. Yep, and the cue ball went straight for that corner pocket rattled and hung up. Well, that's a rare miss. Shooting downward makes this ball play a little bit tougher. He connected. And the ball has position now. Yeah, well, a lot like the last match, Warren, not only the score is working against Soto, but, you know, the, the two breaks we're seeing, it's going to be hard for him to make up ground. Shane... Breaking pretty well. And Soto not complying a few times. Uh, Got to ch get that changed a little bit to overcome this deficit, right? I like straight high here. Yeah, he sure does. I like straight high with just a hint of inside. Going to the left of the no, nine? No, in between the nine and the seven. Yeah, just Le like left this. of the nine. Just like that, yeah. Still got to follow the ball unless he wants to draw by the nine. The reason that was a good play is that it's real hard to not uh, have a shot at the six of some kind. The other things that you risk possibly getting hooked. And it keeps you pretty full on the six as well, which is good. You don't want to be getting thin on the six. Oh, watch out. Watch out. One thing after another, just not working out for this young man. Oh, it looks like he definitely got behind the eight there. Yeah, and that's just a little bit slicker felt. He just drew the, he hit it nice. I wouldn't say he overhit it or anything. I think just the TV table maybe grabbed a little bit better than the outer tables. I mean, if you look at his stroke, it was pretty perfect. Mm hmm Needs a little fortune here. Maybe kick this one in. left a super thin one here, but I'm pretty sure one Shane will take on. Shane's so good at these balls from behind is when he needs to, he doesn't mind really floating it to the hole. Mm -hmm. You know, he's digging down, so that means he thinks he can draw the ball and beat the scratch. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, he would level out and go, pat, you know, to, yeah. to the long yeah, rail. right, right. Maybe even get into the nine of shade. This is the borderline. Oh, he missed you. Oh. I don't know if we can get another look at that, but it looks like his head moved forward just as he started to come forward with the cue, which would distort the tip just enough. 
Yeah, and you know he was going extreme outside there, anyways. Yeah. And it's easy on those type to want to really put extra, a little extra on it. Yep. And you literally just kind of slide across the ball a little bit. Oh, that's thick. So even a couple, you know, innings from, you know, in return from Shane, probably isn't going to get a beat on Soto's scoreboard. I think he's got to take the right pocket here. Cut it backwards. The angle moves the ball pretty easy, so it's just a nice medium speed. That's the shot he really excels at. <laughs> because you'll never hardly see Shane shoot a drag shot. Hardly ever. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can really look back and recall. Now, he'll shoot a drag shot that's like, you know, one little tip down. If he's close to the ball, like I consider a, like a mini drag maybe mm -hmm. or something like that. But a full-blown drag like, you know, Ralph Souquet has kind of made his living on the drag yeah. shot. <laughs> yeah. But you have to really follow through the ball to control where the ball turns over. And really, Shane, that's kind of not something he does all the time. So he would rather pop it back and forth. And he's so good at it. Yeah. Well, six to one right now. Things not working out for Jonas Soda. I'll tell you, D. Atkins hanging in there with James Aranis. It's five to three trails, but at the table. John Moore up five to two over Alex Kazakis. An amazing guy, John Moore, what he does. Uh, I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. Don't know the score with Corey over there. It looks like to me maybe it's one to zero. A lot of action on the nine ball there. The two has gotten a little pinned. I think he can get at it, so he'll try the rail first shot. Problem is the six is a little covered. I mean, the six has got the three a little covered up if he ends up going down table with the cue ball. Would he play the safety behind the... Th nah, you can't play the safety here, right, Mark? you got to try and spin this in. Uh, yeah, the safety's not easy. You'd have to hit the side of the two. I mean, maybe a double kiss if you were trying to play. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, the only right safety I see is really not moving the two a whole lot and trying to float over behind the three. Uh, that's And that's really like a... <laughs> suicide. Yeah. Even if you get it, the guy can easily kick it in. Yeah, and the thing is, it's a slick table, so he doesn't want to shoot the heavy spin shot with a lot of speed. He could easily whiff the whole ball, you know, because it doesn't yeah. grab that much. It yeah. Deflects a little more. I think he can get the cue ball about where it's at now uh, with, like, a you know, the medium kind of mm -hmm. heavy right English. Mm -hmm. I think he gets by the eight. Now, if he hits it a little more... Well, he's not even putting it inside. So maybe he's just cutting this in. Yeah. Watch out corner. Shot. Watch out corner. Still a great shot. Sure was. Shane knows he had to turn it loose a little bit. Now Jonas really has to have this one, right? Yeah. Yeah, just to get a little momentum, get himself back in the match here. kind of funny how the psychological aspects of the match progress and he struggled through a couple opportunities didn't complete them he needs to get a point on the scoreboard here just to feel like he's in the match And the other part of it is to just accept this is what happens when you play in these matches. You're going to have to have these struggling type of things where you need really desperately need one game. It's not going to change the appearance of the score much, but you're going to feel psychologically a whole lot better. It looks like he got there. Almost fell a little bit short, which could have made it a little bit tricky. Now just pinches this back a little bit. Nice angle to get to the eight. Uh, 
almost had a big error there. And that's almost what I meant earlier about that other shot. He kind of stunned that one a little bit. That's why he really lost the line of the cue ball. And we definitely know he didn't want to stun that one, right? Right. He wanted a nice follow stroke there. So maybe that tells us a little bit about that shot earlier. Good to see he's going to get out, though. And he's going to get a chance to break the balls here in the next game. Two games now for Soto. And breaking off the back rail. Well, some kind of results he likes out of it. Yeah, oh yeah. Now he lost the cue ball. That guy, he's playing sneaky good. I mean, really good with the open table. I saw him make a few suspect safeties maybe, but but really moved the cue ball well, pocketed the balls really well. Tell you another thing the guy did well is break the balls. All right, here's a look at Soto's break. Ah, uh, cue ball. So he had a nice complying break. He made a ball in the break, but we've seen that scratch uh, a few times this weekend, or this week rather. Yeah, the cut break when you come across there, it's only fra fractions from scratching or being perfect. But there is some risk with it. It's an interesting layout. That shot tells me he's going to play multiple cushions. Get for the four in the lower right. Now he want this one here. He wants to be a little closer to it when he comes to these multiple cushions. I think, anyways, because the six and the five are together a little bit. So there's. You know, you don't. You want to be accurate coming into the five. Is my point with the six being there? Yeah, and, th and that, there was the stun shot to effect. That was that was by design to stun it down there. You didn't want the arcing topspin on that cut. That's why you see a little shake of the head initially when he shot it. He, he probably wanted to be another foot foot and a half closer to this four. That way, when he's following down, he's okay. A little more accurate. Might end up on top of the five. Yeah, watch out. Okay. Good thing he's hit. He hit at the speed where a lot of good things could happen, mm -hmm. right? So it would have been almost unlucky to fall on top of the five where he really had no offensive shot. All right, one rail cross. You definitely play the side on this one. Kind of been one of those matches for Soto when it looks like he might be able to get something going. Giving up the table to Shane. This will be for Shane's seventh win. 7-2 Seven is our score. Is it back there? Is that? Oh no, that's Zelensky up seven to zero. It looks like I think. I think, anyways, maybe it's Yusuf that's up seven to zero. Can't quite tell. Yeah, you don't have twenty ten, I guess. Not anymore. I can see the <laughs> I can see the scores and I can see the flag colors, Mark. But that's that it. Let's take a little look. See. I think maybe it's uh, Wichter is trailing 7-0. Be a little upset there, but really an upset on that score line. Table number one over there. 
Oh, wow. There's a kiss you don't see very often off the top of the rack right into the side. So, yeah. The two players exchanging scratches on the break. Zelensky is ahead 7 0 over Yusuf. He's ahead, okay. Kind of what I thought at first, but. And I kind of, that's kind of makes a little more sense. Not saying Yusuf, Yusuf plays well. He can certainly win seven in a row against anyone if the balls allow it. All right, should I play short side here? Looks easier. Pull the cue ball out two rails. Now he's kind of falling straight in where he's not going to have a problem. He can just stop the ball to move the ball at all. I wanted, uh, wanted to make sure he wouldn't be stuck to the side rail, I guess. So he pulled it back. That would be a two-cushion position. Yeah, he's pretty straight, so he is going to have to draw it back. Yeah, he did so nicely. And back on the board, 7-3 to three after 10 games. Soto will break in game number 11. Another guy hanging around, practicing, waiting for the 9 o'clock hour, Dennis Aculo. My final predictions were him and Shane. I don't know what the board agrees with that or if it's even possible with the draw, but... Jonas loved to be productive from the break and pull back another game without Shane getting to the table. And he scratched in the last with a complying break. Then now here, I see, I don't think the eight ball is going to get there. The three did, though. So Shane's going to have to roll out. the young man. He's certainly not going to roll out to an easy safety. That's not going to ever happen with Shane. He's going to make it difficult. Most unique rollout player I've ever seen. Even more so than Efren. I mean, I know Efren was incredible. Don't get me mm -hmm. wrong, but Efren rolled out to knowledge more than difficulty, mm -hmm. if that makes any sense. And, you know, of course, it was tough, but it wasn't ever going to be easy. But Shane rolls out to execution, usually difficulty. You know, a little mm -hmm. bit of wit here and there, of course. Yeah. He's a genius. But like he'll roll out over here by the side to the most paper thin on the one you could ever imagine. And you have to have perfect speed coming two rails over to the side rail, right? Yeah. To only use the eight as the snooker. I don't think getting behind the three is possible from here. I mean, I hate to say possible, not possible, but 
Looks like the best you could do is go two rails into the three to me. I think it's going to be super soft speed. Yeah, he went above the three, but this is what I mean. If you leave him a piece, you, you're taking away the worst of it, and he'll... Yeah. So... Which I think him and Earl are the greatest I ever saw at edging the ball. Now, of course, I haven't seen them all, but Shane is some kind of player when it comes to edging that ball. And why do you think players do that better, Mark? What I see is they don't they don't baby it as much when they edge the ball. Edge the ball. They get a real nice clean cut. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't drag at all. Yeah, you know. yeah. I don't know re really any other explanation, really, but of course, straight shooting. But all right, watch outside pocket. It looks like he's queuing with a little bit of right. Well, not anything the young man wanted there. There's a four nine lined up, pretty sweet. <laughs> Now, so Shane's going to have nice options here in a moment after he clears the first three balls, whether he plays the run out or you know, if he gets a little out of line on the three, he's got an option on a combo. He's going for the side pocket. No, oh, now he's queuing up for the corner pocket. Yeah, the side's pretty, you know, small angle. He wants to try and run out. It's almost a prime example of what I've seen him improve on, that kind of stroke right there. You see how fluid that was mm -hmm. from back and forth? Mm -hmm. And not saying he was terrible before, but he's just, what I see is he's just gotten better at it. You know, it's just a calmer stroke. Like he's just added something else to his game. Uh, that's got to go in here. He may be going into the nine just a little bit here. Maybe not. It does look like it's a hint that way. Looks like he stopped in time, so he's okay. He's relieved. And he had to cheat the pocket just a little bit to get that where he could avoid the nine. Yeah. I wonder if he moves the ball a lot here, if he just plays short side on the seven here in a moment. He may pull the ball down the rail by the eight, but he kind of looked like short side a little bit on the seven. Yeah. It's, it's and not, I mean, what is it, four inches right, of short side? Yeah. It's not very much. Yeah. This just lends itself so much easier. And these these great players like this, that when they hit this ball, it'll be, he'll open it up with right-hand English. And tries to drop in there just past the second diamond, so to take the corner pocket scratch out of there altogether. Oh, Got to get a little flat here. Yeah, it's off the rail it. at least. Okay. I think he got a little more out of it with the, or he he didn't expect the right to take it that much. You know, it mm -hmm. is a pretty slick table. A lot of times the right won't won't grab that much. I think, honestly, like I was, he was a little worried when it first <laughs> kind of started going down mm -hmm. that way. So he got flat enough he wanted to go for the side pocket here. And once again, he got that little awkward angle, kind of grimaces. But there's really no reason to feel that way. He's capable of doing this. I think he'll, you know. Yeah, he's coming to the bottom rail, I think. And up. Yeah. And that little grimace, right? It, it wasn't a bad one, though, it was, it, to me. As Again, it's changed a little bit with Shane, I think. Now it's more like the challenge kind of thing. Of course, he wants it to be as good as it can. Who doesn't? I'll 
record queuing. The check. Hey. Kind of a funny thing with Shane, a lot of times the Euros say, well, Shane Van Boning doesn't scare us, which is really tantamount to, I didn't mention it, so why do you bring it up? I mean, maybe you are concerned about it if you're saying he doesn't scare us. I'll tell you, if you ever want to see something special, at least like, you know, the uh, Dream Challenge a couple years ago, and then I think that was 2018, mm -hmm. the way he played there, and then the next week when we went on to play the Euro Tour in Holland, he played Kachi in the final, and of course Kachi played great, like he always does, but uh, Shane played some kind of special rack after rack for those two weeks. He definitely hit some harder than most of them on the cut break. Been unable to do much from that break. He's successful on the break, but he's only got one break and run throughout the match thus far because every time he makes a ball on the break, nothing lines up where he can get a start. Yeah, he can cue decently. He could cue a little better. He'd kind of bank the two away and kind of stun forward maybe or something, keep it simple, which is not really what he always is looking for, simple. Yeah. But, but I'm trying to see what else is very doable. Well, everything's iffy. Here's... Yeah. Can't quite depend on holding the two up with the four mm -hmm. and coming back behind the seven, eight, nine. That's yeah. I wonder if he can play an offensive shot here going to the rail. It's it's kind of sitting perfect to play the two into the rail and slide it in off the back of the four and come up that side of the table trying to get shape on the three and right. some safety. It's a little thin, I guess. And the, the other part of that is that when you miss it, guess where the two ball ends up? Maybe hanging? <laughs> close. It's going to be <laughs> close to the pocket. That's the problem. Right. Oh, beauty. Oh, it was, too. Really nice. He was trying to get a little closer, cut off the jump, but he did really nice. But he took care of the two ball for sure. That was really good work. Well, yeah, and he committed to it. That's why the inside agreed with it correctly. The nice heavy hit on the two was, was good. And, again, the speed. Uh, I thought he might think twice of this. Hoping to lay the two on the left side rail and drop the cue ball to the upper rail. I think that's kind of the plan here. Yeah, I like that. Nice shot, kid. Very nice. Oh, hey. No kidding. Yeah, if you recognize it, you can hit it kind of half the ball, quarter ball. You know, there's a few different ways you have to hit that shot that, you know, like Shane here on this one with a nice medium top English stroke. Should hug enough to hold the cue ball and maybe bank the two down here below the nine. Could make this in the side. Okay. Yeah, he wanted to not even risk leaving it up there trying to make it in the side. He just wanted to get that angle where he gets that separation. Got the cue ball come backwards down to the rail. All right. <laughs> I'd be careful on this one. Two rails behind it. He may not get a rail with the, cue, with the ball here. If he hits it real solid where the cue ball doesn't slide, this two ball is going into some traffic. I've seen this one not mm -hmm. get a rail a bunch of times before. Like, there's not even a clear path on the two. And it's probably going to hit the eight, the three, or the six. We'll see how hard he wants to hit it. I oh, hit it pretty hard. He got way behind it. The, the, oh, that's unlucky there. That's going to give up a cut in the side, I think. Maybe the corner. Jeez. 
Shane. Looks like he's going to be aggressive and roll this into the corner pocket. Good clean hit. Perfect speed. That expanded the margin of error on that pocket quite a little bit. And I don't think that one goes on the outer tables. I think that's the difference in the heat a little bit here. TV table. and I've been watching those outer tables. They're playing pretty tough. This is kind of a funny shot, too. Yeah. You got to smooth it over. You know, you could lose a little accuracy if you really try to get on it. Should get there, though. You see how he lets it take? And that little half elevation, you know, it wasn't much, but it's five degrees of elevation with the back end of the cue to get that little stun in it, so it's not just a rolling ball yet. And Shane plays with that little downward strike a lot, so he's very used to it. This one's a little funny. He's just got to trick it past the seven and use... Uh, don't think he really wants to entertain three rails here. Maybe. I think he just floats. I like that. Nice shot. It's pretty interesting. It's like an artist that doesn't paint a picture with just one stroke. There's a host of intermittent, you know, uh, small strokes, longer strokes, uh, fluid strokes. Yeah, and the practice makes them just kind of natural where they become... No, second nature. Yeah. You don't have to be so conscious of them. You have to feel it. All those Filipino players have all these different tools, and they just feel them. A lot of times people, you know, they'll say, you know, I could have played this, but, I, you know, I, I chose follow when I should have chose draw looking back and all that. Then... They want a, uh, a clear explanation, but experience is not taught, it's earned. And that's, you know, just the fact that you're aware of it and recognize it, that's, you're on the way to getting better. Right. Uh, but they, they kind of want me to explain it to them. You know, and, and like, hey, just tell me what to do. That's all I need to know. Right. But it doesn't really work like that. No, not exactly. It's kind of like when people say, man, you just got to trust it. Well, no, you got to practice trusting it. I mean, you can't. I don't know of anybody that it, that really works. Snap yeah, my fingers. Snap my fingers. And, oh, trust that stroke. Of course you do, but, you know, reps trusting that stroke is really where it's at. Pretty big difference here in the break success. 833 to 333. Gene's been successful five out of six breaks. Soto, two out of six breaks. It's not a big enough sample size, however, to draw any firm conclusions other than we know Shane has a great break. Those pretty good. Yeah, and he got plenty of movement. He's going to get a shot on the two. Medium tough shot for these guys. The problem is he's leading towards a three that doesn't go by the four. And he doesn't have enough angle to really move it back and forth. He may have to play from underneath the three here in the side maybe. I don't know. Unless he really thinks he can pinch the ball. Which I think, I think, think it makes. It. I think he can roll this. Oh, maybe so, Mark. Yeah, that's a good call. Yeah, and the four's cuttable, so if he has to move... Oh, he's playing the side. Well, uh, doesn't let him by there. Now that means there's going to be a ton of movement on this cue ball. But like I said, the four is cuttable. So if he can somehow just even get around the spot yeah. area with the cue ball... Don't take your eye off the prize here. Make sure you're making three. <laughs> Great job there. I don't know if he's going to get there. Short I think, side. <laughs> I think he is. Yeah. You can get rewarded for that good shot.
straight in, it looks like. So <clears throat> he went nerves a little high. Should be able to handle this one. This ball gets a little off angle sometimes. That shot up in the corner can be tough. I think he's really straight. Jonas looks to be feeling pretty good. Fall a little straight here. Good yeah. thing the nine's pretty. Yeah, let's go two easy. rails and just get away from that side cushion. So well, Jonas is going to get back on the board at nine to four. With a quality break and run, I might add. That's right. This could be the break. Game number 14. A few updates out there. Lee Van Corteza ahead of Oliver Zolnoki, 7 to 5. John Moore at 5 to 4 over Alex Kazakis. Corey Duell getting things done over there, 5 to 2 ahead over, I think it's Wada. Is this the man's name from Kuwait? Well, from 7 0. Yusuf has put three in a row, and now it's 7 to 3. So those are all the matches going on here at the 7 o'clock round. We'll have another round at 9. See a bunch of them warming up. Mika Eminen, Alvin Ocean. Dennis Arcolo, I see yeah. down there. Looks Ruth. like Ralph Souquet. Yeah, Ruslan Chinahoff, Maximilian Lechner. A bun <laughs> bunch of players and places represented here at 9 o'clock as well. Ralph Souquet, the timeless Ralph Souquet. Kaiser. All right, Shane wants to end it now, right? Yeah. <laughs> he loves getting his break on track. Do you get a shot? I uh, don't know. It looks like the two's going to get a little covered <laughs> up. Hands up in the Yet air. again. Yeah. Yeah. And it, the thing for Shane is a little frustration at times when he knows he likes the way he's hitting them, you know? Yeah. I mean, the cut breaks a little bit of gamble anyways, but he likes the way things are going. I don't know if he can clip the left side and get around the six and still get to this right side rail to come behind the seven. You know, he can see a decent piece of the two. That's not the problem. This may be one of those shots uh, I was talking about earlier. How well he edges the ball. Because he flows on through his stroke, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. He big. doesn't try to guide it. See that? Oh my goodness. You see what I'm saying, though? Oh he was very aggressive with the hit. swing. What a hit. That is, yeah. that is tough to do. And I think that's the only thing I could ever calculate, Mark, why Earl and him did this so well compared to most. Most are really fearing this, and they don't commit to the stroke. And I see Shane and Earl, they commit to the stroke on those, and it makes very good clean contact onto the ball. And, and you can see what happened there. You know those guys that don't commit to the stroke and go on through? Okay. I think you might be talking about me because, <laughs> no, I, I, seriously, I feel like maybe I am tentative. And of course. It's and one of the shots that makes us tentative, I, to so be honest with you've, you. You've taught me something here completely. I'm a, I can't wait to get to try that, you know, and, and just work out of the bed. Just because you understand it doesn't mean you have it down immediately. No, no. But, but I yeah. really feel like that's going to advance my edging the ball skills because they are suspect. Well, it's like when you go ahead and accelerate, it creates a very clean cut, you know, and just like other shots, you know, I think it does it, the same thing. It, so. it enhances the accuracy of it because yeah. when I'm shooting at a ball in a pocket, I do get through it good. Right, But on right, that right. shot, it's distasteful, and I'm not sure, and I'm thinking, God, if I hit this a little heavy, and that comes yeah. out. And, and you let up on the stroke is the key. Probably. Because, because you're, mm -hmm. you're not worried about fear the object ball, I mean, cue ball movement. You're fearing too much mm -hmm. object ball movement. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really educational little point there. And I probably would say, like I said, the two I've, best I've ever seen at that. Buddy was real good, too, by the way. <laughs> I think they were just a hair better than Buddy at it. You know? Yeah. 
I think, you know, had Buddy played in this era, he would be that too because he's not going to settle for being second tier at all. No, right? no. And same with Siegel. But I do think the modern-day players play a little better from that, that era, but they didn't have anyone to compare to. Sure. They were top of the line in that era. I like to play Buddy with the template. Oh, my. <laughs> huh? Yeah. I was yeah. trying to tell some of the great players a few years ago at the Texas State Open because the template was involved for the first time. This is five, six, seven years ago, and there were some eights and sevens and eights, you know, in the winter break format. I tried to let them know that that's a great feat, making that many balls, but how many do you think Buddy would have ran if he could just repeat one stroke and get the same shot on the break, right? Yeah. All right, well, talk about those greats. This is today's greatest, in my opinion. Uh, he has to be right on up there with the greatest of all time. Oh, absolutely. And now with another victory here in Norfolk. Oh, so nice job there. Uh, you know, talking about Shane, nobody's worked this hard. I mean, with modern technology, too, and people to push you, I think Nick Varner would have been competitive in this era. Naturally, oh, we know yeah. Earl and uh, Buddy and Siegel like that. They would, they would, didn't play this well in their prime, but they would have had they been in this era. I agree. All right, this has been an AccuStats production. Thank you for joining us, and so long for just a while.